Warning, this content is for entertainment and educational purposes only. This video is brought to you by First Detachment Nutrition. Battle tested, expert formulated. Use discount code AB10 at checkout for 10% off. What's up, bros? What's up? What's up? Uh, before we get started, I just want to remind everybody to check out the Science of PEDs and Anabolics e-course found at anabolicbodybuilding.com. I think Kurt and I are up to almost 90 modules right now. It is pretty comprehensive. I think one of the best uh, PED e-courses out there. Also, you can catch us on Spotify. We've really been picking up steam on Spotify. Although Spotify doesn't pay me jack shit. Not that I make a bunch off of YouTube anyway. But um, don't drive. Plow into a tree. If you're going to listen to it in your car, do it on Spotify, I guess. What's going on, guys? Not much. Yeah, not a great deal. Well, just another week uh it was a final week actually jared visiting from the states so he, oh jared um, feather yeah so he flew back to was it, uh vegas on what's that wednesday so wednesday our time 3 a.m which is uh into china time so i'd say it's like what's that like 3 p.m tuesday your time i think or about that that like tuesday afternoon uh so yeah he that, that was cool Him he's visiting, a big dude it's it awesome yeah i got some photos next to him this time but I'm probably not going to post them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, he is a pro, so you know what you're comparing yourself to. Yeah, we saw him and Mike when we went to the Arnold. They were both there, um, both there training. When we were yeah, at the Arnold. down to earth, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, my, Mike's hilarious. Mike cracks me up. He, he's a funny dude. Um, Jared seems kind of quiet. I've never really talked to him. Um, but, yeah, they're both, they're both great. And I... I know people are going to shit their pants. They always get upset when I talk about it. I pretty much run RP training. That's what I do. <laughs> people are like, that doesn't work. And I'm like, well, I don't know. What I've been doing you're for, pretty uh, much four announcing, years. you're announcing that you choose violence when you say that these days. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. People get very, very passionate and offended about their, their training. It's really weird with training and diet. Like, I don't know which is people are more cult like about. Probably diet. Probably diet's the thing that people get more cult like about but it always makes me it, it, like if i want to piss people off on social media all i have to do is post something up about diet or training and then i i've got people blowing me up tell me i don't know what the fuck i'm talking about because it stands to reason that more people would be uh crazy and cultish about diet than training because everybody eats not not everybody lifts well yeah. i like uh my new thing is I just ask people like when like like I had I put something up about fats and some guy was like saturated fats important for building muscle and I was just like uh, how does it build muscle yeah, <laughs> yeah my favorite part and is how quickly ask, the arguments fall apart when you ask them one question <laughs> yeah I ask them one yeah, question yeah. and then they don't have an answer and they just kind of fade away rather than telling them they're stupid I just <laughs> ask them. I'm just like yeah. why. Do you think that? Where did you get that? Oh. Well, I haven't thought that far ahead. <laughs> I just know. I heard somebody say it. I feel so it. I'm repeating I feel it because that was feel. smart. <laughs> I heard somebody say it. I don't have any facts. Uh, it's, it's always they always point to some weird bodybuilder that uh, ate or trained that yeah. way. And I'm like, yeah, I have this I'm like that genetic anomaly. Total evidence that supports my view. That's why I believe it. Well, speaking of Israel, tell he talks about the. Um, Talks about the survivorship bias. I don't know if you guys have heard of that, but people have a bias towards the one person that succeeded mm -hmm. um, rather than the 99 that failed doing it that way. <laughs> so it's, it's precisely like, that's what I'm saying. Like, there, it's the way that makes them feel. Like, we all love an underdog, and it makes you feel good to see the, you know, the one person who ought not to have had the positive result have the positive result. And so you want it to believe you want it to be true, but even if the facts don't support it as as being the the rule, but rather the exception. Yeah, it inspires I, hope. I, I get it. This mm -hmm. guy says, "Am I moaning about IG comments again?" Yes, I am moaning about <laughs> IG comments again. It's dude. It's I had no idea. 
uh, about how fucking awful people are until I get some popularity <laughs> on social media. They're, they're not, not, no, no, I, I remind myself literally, it's like, it's probably less than 1% of the people that we actually talk to. It's a very, very, very small percentage in, in the grand okay. scheme. What's up? Things, so, what's going on, guys? So, I do take that in context. I, I realize that most, like, you know, if, if I have 40,000 people follow me on Instagram and 1% are assholes, it's 400 assholes out of, out of, you know, <laughs> out of 40,000. So that's really a pretty good ratio when you, when you think about <laughs> it. But, but those 400 assholes are really loud. Yeah. They make a still, lot of noise. They're in my DMs. Funny how, like, uh, you can have waves of positive and, you know, 10 times people being positive. Being positive. Oh, mic is gone. Yeah. The audio has gone real weird. Colin, your mic is gone. Oh, fuck. There it is. It's oh, back. there it is. Back. What the fuck? <laughs> All right, well, oh, no, I, was, I was making a cogent point, but we can move well, on. We made a point in silence. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I'm sorry to be whining about social media assholes. Kurt and I commiserate on text. They're like, you see this jerk? <laughs> I should give it no credence. I, I, I know you. I know you. <laughs> but it, it, it's, uh, it, it's just it's bewildering to me. I can always tell, too, when I'm on contest prep, <laughs> because that's when they really come out. Yeah. Um, I, I, I posted a couple things up on my feed yesterday. I get these dudes that'll DM me the pictures and I'll be like, oh, I look better than you and I'm natty. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> Go, you know, where I'll be competing at the summer, show up on the yeah. stage and let's see, let's see how you look. I hate to, yeah, sum up the entire the world pop- I hate to sum up the entire world population in one sentence, but I'd say the only person that looked better than you natural was Ronnie Coleman. When he was not. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't. These people, I don't know. What, it's always the, it's the, um, uh, I don't know. I, it's the angry natty. I'm bitching about people again, but the angry natty that says, if I just took <laughs> one cycle, I'd look like a pro bodybuilder. And I'm like, then why are you fucking taking a cycle, man? Take a cycle yeah. and stop being a <laughs> pussy and, and take a cycle and you would look, you get, get your pro card and make a bunch of money. Yeah. We, we all know that's not true. You're not going to take one cycle and yeah. be what that, the pro. Well, you, you could be one cycle. It's just one long, endless cycle that goes on. <laughs> like, <every second>. Yeah. <laughs> Sharp Holmes Solution says the best answers for anyone like that is you're right. I we, yeah, we was sure. talking to Dr. Dean St. Mart, and he said that people, the idiots come out of the woodwork, and he just, that's what he says. He says, yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Don't engage. That's usually what I do. I'd say ninety nine percent of the time, I just don't engage them. But once in a while, it's hard like though. Have, I like your your inner Mike Israel comes out. <laughs> <laughs> he does it for sport. Yeah, Mike, he sits at home at night. And he'll get bored of watching Netflix and occasionally engage in the comment section. Yeah. You, you can't blame them though. I mean, like they they do all of this tertiary level study to become a, a learned individual in their field, and then they just have to deal with all this bullshit. And they roll their eyes and, and they kind of turn a blind eye to it 90% of the time. Then that other 10%, obviously, curiosity gets the cat and they kind of get a little bit bored. They're like, oh, well, let's see if I just throw a little bit of fire on this uh, and, and, and see what happens kind of thing. Kurt, I can't imagine, like, in your case, like, spending eight years in school and then, you know, however many years in a lab doing practical study and then you got some dude that didn't even fucking take high school chemistry class telling you, how the endocrine system works. Well, like the guy yesterday, right? the, guy, the guy yesterday wanted to debate, right? We were talking about cortisol. Yeah. Um, no, it's uh, calories in, calories out. Yeah, he, he didn't even understand what thermodynamics was. He was talking about thermodynamics. I'm like, bro, you, you don't even know what you're talking about. What's up, Scott? That, Scott competed last week. He looked great. He looked yeah, great. Man. Yeah, he, he looked yeah. awesome. Yeah, That's really shredded. Great. Awesome. So hats off to Scott. Um, I was just yeah. on Scott's podcast. You guys want to check it out? Um, the Scott Mize show. It was, uh, I thought it turned out pretty well. I went back and listened to it. I had a lot of caffeine that day, so I talked a lot. <laughs> Poor Scott. I, <laughs> not that I don't talk a lot already, but it was, uh, it was, uh, I thought it was pretty good. I wasn't sure if I was just a rambling mess, and then I went back and listened to it, and I'm like, all right. I, I, I hate listening to myself, but I've had to force myself to do it now that I'm doing content to see how stupid, um, yeah. mm-hmm. stupid I sound. 
Scott's I, lots of positive. I had a great time but on. I hope so. I had a great time on Scott's show. I think his show's super organized and well run. Yeah, he's a good interviewer. Um, yeah. Um, I, I don't uh, myself I, either. I'm trying to get better at interviewing. It's been a skill I've been working on, just not over talking on people letting them it's talk. Difficult. It's more challenging than people think, I think. Like, yeah. There's more to it. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was it Larry King that said you just listen and people will listen and ask questions. That's all you should do when you interview. Yeah, Joe Rogan's a real good kind of example of it. Like I think I remember some, one of his hosts actually complimenting him on his um, podcasting skills and just said that you're really good. At, I think it was actually Jordan Peterson. He had Jordan Peterson on, and Jordan, Jordan Peterson was going on about like, to Joe Rogan in the conversation how. He just knows what to say, the right things to prompt the conversation, and and I think Joe's response was, "I just, I'm just genuinely curious." Like, and that's the, I think that curiosity just guides the the conversation and flow really well. Yeah, I agree. So Casey said, "Who agrees that Kurt should do a full day of eating?" We want to see how much you eat. I just did one yesterday. It'll I be. Did, up. <clears throat> I did a full day of eating on Instagram and like a medium day. If you want to see a high day. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think they want videos. <laughs> yeah, well, well, I, I I would like to see. Yeah, like I, I enjoyed seeing what you ate, but it gonna... felt it, it was it was like a slideshow of like photos. Oh, I think okay. what they. Well, what they I mean, you like... saw first a hand. I think I ate that whole pizza. I ate two hamburgers <laughs> today. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, Kurt was the only one who kept up with me in terms of uh, pizza eating and uh, when the yeah. meat guy. <laughs> remember the restaurant that I kept because I was the smallest oh, one there yeah. that I kept trying to cut me off from the yeah, meat. Yeah, we went to a Brazilian <laughs> steakhouse and and Kurt kept getting overlooked when they would come around with the meat. <laughs> it was bullshit. <laughs> well, because I'm out, you guys outweigh me by a hundred pounds, so like I'm surrounded by three hundred pound men. <laughs> like, I'm so for, <laughs> for me being a big guy i don't have a big appetite anymore i i, I struggle putting the food down although i got yeah. ripped off at texas roadhouse last night colin and i went there for my treatment he got the big <laughs> steak i got the little one i'm like fucking asshole it's my one cheat meal this week no anyway i'll have a full day of eating up uh, it's not kurtz but i i could do one what do they just, want they want to I just like edited it, it and it was almost an well god I had almost an hour and a half of video I chopped it down to like 40 minutes so I'm a big fan of those full day of eating videos I've I probably watched like 20 or 30 of them like over on uh what's it like muscle and fitness's YouTube channel oh Fa- yeah various yeah. pros like you know they they do it like MTV cribs almost <laughs> you know like <laughs> you know or they they show them like you know they, they wake up and like this is this is how they fix their breakfast this is uh you know and it, it's it it's funny like they're so entertaining because everybody pretty much eats the same thing but everybody prepares it a little differently and then you get to see like their little insights and how they how they do it the way they like it and you learn a few tricks here and there or maybe it's muscular development that i'm i'm remembering i can't remember but no yeah so do something like that kurt like where you you, you show show everything that you that you eat and how you how you throw it together you know maybe maybe give people a little insight into why you do it i'd watch that video okay yeah i'd watch it too it's funny they actually do the best i mean out of like analytics wise out of all the types of videos uh a fitness channel or like a bodybuilding channel can upload um i looked at the analytics of my videos i've got i think i've got one or two full day eating videos on my channel Mm-hmm. And the most recent one I did was from my first kind of push in my off season. Calories only peaked at six thousand. They didn't get higher than that, but I did like a um, six thousand calorie full day of eating, and it it brings it's still to this day like it brings in more views than any other video. It's okay, I guess like everybody eats. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's so, weird. Mine too is I cook for I'm cooking for four, so they all eat the same. They get stuck eating the same crap I eat yeah so <laughs> that's awesome it, it even looks crazier because i'm making much more of it for everyone. yeah that's awesome sizes. it's like the three little bears or whatever <laughs> but, like, yeah no that's fantastic yeah I, 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 it's people who are watching you to learn how to you know adhere to their bodybuilding diet better i could are, do that are gonna, I mean, are, I can... are gonna enjoy it but then like everybody's gonna enjoy it. It, it just you know if you lifted no weights and didn't eat like a bodybuilder at all it would still be interesting to see what they do you know yeah, it's, I, it's, I can do that with Scott. Scott, I can include that in the food one. I mean, I don't think that's my schedule. Yeah, Scott, Scott asked, um, oh, sorry. Here, Kurt, 
how Kurt manages his schedule. He wakes up early, trains early. What does he eat before training? How does he stay productive all the day? Time with yeah. kids, etc. Well, and I don't, I don't get enough sleep, and that's why. And then <laughs> not like sleeping is a superpower, isn't it? I'm sick. I always on contest prep when I'm amped up on on fat burners. I'm the most productive I am all year. I get shit done because <laughs> I'm sleeping like four hours a night. Trend and ephedrine are great for productivity. Yeah, you don't yeah. really need a lot of sleep on trend. <laughs> you ain't getting any, any. You don't need a lot. Yeah, even if you want it, you're not getting it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It's right funny now, how, like, I, I actually like, I prefer contest prep than the off season until about probably like four weeks out. Like, from like start of prep until four weeks out, you just, it's just like you progressively get more and more productive. You feel better and better and better. You look better and better and better. And then it's kind of like just a, a quick kind of turnaround. <laughs> you start feeling progressively worse. Um, Sharp says the best way to build a quality YouTube channel is to start contest prep, label it Road to Pro, and make it a full day of eating, the contest <laughs> vlog, and then an epic cheat post day. Post show day. I, I feel like somebody told me I should call my my check-ins Road to Pro. I feel like that's just such an assumptive and douchebag thing to say. Yeah. And I'm, I'm been, never going to be a pro, so I would never call my. There's video. so many guys out there that do that. Yeah, you um, know, you know, it's funny. Like you can't. You, you're damned if you do, and damned if you don't. If you do road to pro, you're damned. If you do like um, cut or like prep or like bulk, is your like series title? You're a Sam Sulek wannabe. Like it's just you can't do anything without being labeled like a copycat of somebody else who's already established that kind of theme in the fitness industry, which is a bit. It's a bit sad to be honest i mean people can't i, I suppose copyright a term like bulk or cut but yeah it's just says, i'm not stupid yeah, to that scott my uh my video too. guest told me i should put up like a giant cheat meal and i'm like but i don't do that so I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> now, one of my things is i've tried to just uh call and i talk about it all the time is remaining authentic just be who i am and just throw it out there and people either like it or they won't mm -hmm. yeah yeah, I will say that, I mean, having met both Colin and Paul in person, they are pretty much exactly the same as they are. <laughs> I don't see any difference in, in reality. Yeah, what you I think with Chase, I mean, I think same with, I, I think on the one I've not actually met in person is Nick. I mean, I think Chase is exactly the same in person. I think Todd is the same yeah. in person. Similar. Todd's a little... Uh, Todd's person is a little different in person. Todd's actually a quieter and quieter, more, quieter, more low, key, low key in person than what you. I, I was expecting him to be a total spaz in person. <laughs> He's not. What does He's, Brian Shaw, does Brian Shaw eat a ton of food? I'm guessing he's a massive man. Yeah, he's, yeah, he uh, quite a bit, but not like relative to some people, like smaller and leaner than him. Not a great deal, but he's. he's I think he's up around nine thousand calories a day, which is a decent a lot, amount. But I mean, for his I, size, it's not that much. Yeah, that, well, that's what I mean. Like, he's what he's like. He was 430 pounds when he was doing that. That's not a lot of food. No. If you work out calories per kilogram of body weight, that's pretty low. Like, he's two of me and eat one and a half times yeah. what I eat. So, I'd have to eat more. So, good thing I'm up 430. Yeah. Most, like, most people don't realize most body are eating probably on average 45 calories per kilogram yeah. of body weight on the kind of mid low end. Like, so it's, yeah. I mean, R Roman Fritz, he did a full day of eating video. A while back, it was called "You're Not Eating Enough," <laughs> and uh, it was like over nine <laughs> like thousand calories. And he was he was 120 kilo at the time, but he's like he's shredded. He's pretty much like five weeks out conditioning um, in his off season, and so it's like that's a lot of food for someone of his size. Like when you think about it that way, and he's pretty much doing the same calories every day of the week. It's not high days and low days. It's nine thousand plus calories seven days a week. Um, so so that was interesting to see his video because the, the way he eats is. Uh, it's different yeah yeah i have a grocery store for josh i got a grocery store video planned um as, as scott says my um contest prep updates are informative in detail but also casual and easy to watch i try to keep in that although like this week like i i got all the people <laughs> I, I talked about my off season cycle going into the show i talked about running 250 tests and then up to three up to three grams and i got like you don't mean you can't maintain <laughs> size on 250 grams of test and then it's like you're gonna die from from three grams of gear and i'm like which is it man <laughs> i don't 
Oh man, people crack me up. It's either you're you're lying about how little you take, or you're you're taking too much. Yeah, that's uh, like when you're driving on the highway. Anybody driving slower than you is a fucking so, idiot. So, so seriously, <laughs> like if I if <laughs> anyone I'm driving taking, fast faster than you is a maniac. If I'm if I said I'm taking seventeen fifty tests and fourteen hundred primo a week, why would I lie about taking two fifty tests in the off season? Yeah, that's I don't logical. <laughs> people don't realize like 250 test is still super physiologic like it's still above trt yeah like, if you can't if you can't hold like I mean, slightly like high more tissue TRT than you can like yeah if you can't hold more tissue on 250 than you can naturally like you probably suck at training like whatever your natural baseline is like you you'd assume that you'd carry a little bit more tissue like it's not a far stretch to kind of assume that and i mean let's say for example paul say you're like Two two forty if you're drug free or two thirty or whatever like holding like two fifty two sixty isn't unreasonable on like two fifty test when you've built it with more milligrams like you don't yeah I mean I can maintain. hold two fifty two sixty pretty easy I'm not saying that long term definitely body composition gets worse that is for sure yeah I um, think it slows it slows down the rate of loss being on two fifty test but it doesn't like. But the idea of being a bodybuilder is we're not on 250 tests for like a very prolonged period of time. It was like, like four a, months. Yeah, like three or four months tops. And it's like, you're, you're not getting to a point where you're, you're losing a lot of tissue in that time, I don't think. But if you were to do it for, say, a year, you'd probably regress quite a bit. Yeah, like, yeah just probably. Enough the, just enough for the EQ to not come out fully and then go back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like how Jake Cutler would kind of go off cycle completely from EQ for, for six weeks because it was completely out of his system yeah. the day after he stopped shooting. Well, Colin, <laughs> Colin just runs TRT. That's all he runs, and he's he hangs on to a pretty good bit of size. I, I, yeah. Colin is I, – I mean, I only did the one day lifting with you, but you, you move the same amount of weight I do, and I'm on more than TRT. Hmm. Uh, I, I just what, – what I struggle with, and, and I'm sure this will come as a surprise to both you and the audience, is, uh, the, is adherence to the diet long term. It's hmm. just uh, – <laughs> that's what i struggle with well i will say though when we were in ohio you were literally eating chicken and mustard like, yeah no i i, I can do it for a while mustard. and then like I, it you know it's just like you, you know what it takes like it, it you gotta you gotta be you know 90 percent, 100 percent of the time and sometimes i, I dip <laughs> i dip below that but, i was impressed though in that situation that you were oh thanks yeah no i appreciate that we um we've got three guys on here that are skip hill um cl uh, clients i by the way i reached out to skip and asked bros i'm gonna let you know you gotta give him a hard time i asked skip to come on the uh, podcast and he said it was too early for him <laughs> <laughs> well, I, skip, skip's coming on my show on monday yeah, Skip. I don't know oh, if you know. Like, I've known he wakes up at three in time. the afternoon, though. Yeah, Skip. <laughs> Skip, Skip doesn't go to bed, and he stays up and works at night, and then sleeps until three or four in the afternoon. The night owl. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I can't blame him. I've kind of like transitioned to that kind of a schedule since I've been in Thailand. It's hard oh. not to though. Like, I mean, I think he probably has a lot of clients, honestly, in other countries. So he's probably just like progressively been pushed into that that kind of a schedule. Oh, dude! If I didn't have kids, I would totally transition to being up all night. I'm I'm already up until like one or two as is. Skip's kids are older, aren't they? They've moved out. Yeah, now, they're so adults. That makes sense. Yeah, they're yeah, adults. yeah. So that's probably why he's doing it. He's but he's always been that way, from what I remember. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, Skip's hilarious. We we definitely need to get him on here sometime. Yeah, he seems like fun. Um, <laughs> slow thugs. Paul should have entered the Detroit Pro. They need some competitors. Yeah, I think there's like four guys in it. <laughs> that's wild. Oh, that's sad. Yeah, it's it's nobody's competing. They must not be paying anything. <laughs> Plus, it's Detroit. <laughs> it's <We're>, Detroit. <laughs> We're twelve guys. Eat them. Them got mugged on the way there. <laughs> who wants to go to Detroit? <laughs> can you can get an Olympia bed? Roman should have done that show. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that would have been an easy in invite. Um, or e easier, I should say. Not easier. Well, I'm not going to say this on air, but there we go. <laughs> with, with the it's really quiet on here without Todd. I'm going to have to do all the talking. <laughs> <laughs> we could take more questions. Hey, we, we could do that. We can actually answer some people's questions. Now that I'm done bitching about assholes on social media. 
Well, Paul, you should have seen the when you were gone in Aruba, and it was just. I mean, Khan did a great job holding the fort down, but people were so angry that you weren't here. Yeah. <laughs> Where's Paul? Yeah. I usually yeah, just was... sit here and say nothing. And I want to say there were yeah. like nine of us. There were like nine other people. But they were... <laughs> yeah, they weren't having it. They're just like, yeah. Paul's not here. Fuck this shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we'll have a little fun today. What I'll do is if anybody wants to come on, actually come on live. Now you have That'd to be, be cool. well behaved. <laughs> you have to be well behaved. We've had a few people in the way we're doing stuff they shouldn't be doing. I'm, I'm, all, I'm, all, I'm already thinking that somebody's going to come on doing some weird shit now. No, 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 no we've we've seen everything. I think uh, not everything, but we've seen people come on in 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 like masks. We've had we had people no. people coming on with with syringes and you know, smoking and drinking. Can't do any of that stuff, thing. people. Like, <laughs> just be normal. <laughs> I'll give you two minutes, and then I'm pulling the plug. So make sure you make sure your question is concise. Do you remember the Gong Show? Didn't they have the big hook? <laughs> oh yeah, the big hook. <laughs> uh, Josh says you can get mugged just for saying Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Bob's uh, not here to hear us disparage his uh, his hometown. His hometown. Where I'm not even sure about? you can say Detroit. It's not politically correct. I think you have to say Beverly Hills. <laughs> <laughs> Although I think they're about the same now, aren't they? <laughs> oh, somebody uh, brought up the episode with Planning Mike. That was an all-time high for that was anabolic the bodybuilding high. live. Oh, yeah. I remember watching that episode. <laughs> oh, I, think I, was on it. I just watched it, and I just thought... That dude's just off his chops, like his well, I don't think, lately. I think he'd come off an all-night coke bender when, when we <laughs> yeah. had him on here. <laughs> yeah, I feel I feel bad for the guy if he's all right. Uh, uh, Dave Lance is try living in Baltimore. Oh, believe me, I know all about Baltimore. We're Colin and I live in the DMV. I lived in so. Baltimore for a, a, a year or two. Uh, it, it was an interesting time and an interesting <laughs> place to live. Let me tell you. Like I, I've 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 been in the neighborhoods like where where scenes from The Wire are filmed and they didn't really have to do much to, much to dress up those sets I'll tell you that much uh, you you could go in Baltimore one block is like posh and the next block is like fried chicken like place and you could buy like crack out front like it's, it's wild <laughs> I, I would just say as a like an outsider like a non American my perspective. I don't know a single thing about Baltimore, but when I hear Baltimore, I think of like a fat nerd who lives in his grandmother's basement in a van with a t-shirt on, like a tie dyed t-shirt with a kitten shooting laser beams from its eyes. Like that's that's kind of like the picture I get. I don't know if that's <laughs> accurate. Is that Baltimore or is that... no? Well, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dave, yeah, we, know really. we know Baltimore very well. I, I've been up to many Ravens and O's games and yep. go to the uh, Fells Yards. Point. I used to go party in Fells Point. Fells Point is wild. <laughs> mm. Fells Point is great. Baltimore is a weird town, man. It's like its own thing. There is no other town on the East Coast like Baltimore. That is true. It is a special breed of white trash that populates Baltimore. <laughs> I love it when uh, Stav- <laughs> you all know Stavros Hakias, the uh, comedian. Yeah, uh, I love it when he does his Baltimore accent, like he throws <laughs> it on real, real thick. Like <laughs> he's like, he's like, she st- stole my money for I was going to use for spicy Baltimore. cheetos. <laughs> going to the ooze game and yeah. him to crab cakes. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah, only people from the DMV understand that. that Dave Capel <laughs> in his most recent special, he talked about how we've had some hard times in DC, and because Dave's from DC, and then he goes, and then there's that place north of here <laughs> called Baltimore. <laughs> and Dave says he's got stories, bro. Come on and tell us. <laughs> yeah, we can trade Baltimore All right. stories. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to put the uh, the link in the chat if you want to if you're brave enough to come on uh make sure your mic isn't shit and your camera isn't shit um you can you can jump on uh we'll pull the plug on you quickly if you suck <laughs> tommy, <laughs> no pressure no pressure tommy should we'll come put it down to a technical difficulty <laughs> yeah tommy come on tommy i would like to i'd like to hear josh he's always got the zingers yeah we'll see if he's as funny 
see if he's as funny in person or he's only clever on comments. <laughs> um, all right, you want to grab a... Oh, here's Scott. All right. Awesome. The Scott Myers. Hey, guys. Show. Scott. What's up, man? How's it going? How's it going? Yeah, well, we know Scott's right. competent and can talk like an adult. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, you look so much better now. Like when we, when I was on the yeah. on the um, on your podcast, man, you look like you were on death's door. <laughs> yeah, I'm starting to fill out a bit more. Low energy. I was like, man, is he going to make it through this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I I did a podcast with Nick. Uh, oh no, we rescheduled. I think I, but I, it was going to be two days out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. There's no fucking way, man. <laughs> yeah. I think I was rough. deliriously putting stuff up on on um, on social media um, the last week of my show. I'm like in that manic phase where where you get at the end where you just like yep. doing stuff just to be doing stuff because you're so <laughs> frantic and everything. Like like uh, do do you get like I get like this at the end of prep where I just start buying shit that I would never buy. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I bought Pokemon cards. For the first time in 20 years. I was like, this will make me happy, right? <laughs> Didn't you? Chase, chasing the dopamine. Oh, man. Chasing the dopamine. Yeah, ch chasing that Pokemon <laughs> dragon. Yeah. Um, and, sharp, and, sharp, oh God. sharp home solutions. So shopping for cars. Oh, my God. I almost bought a Corvette on, on prep. <laughs> oh, man. That's bad. <laughs> I almost made a really $100,000 bad decision. I think Nick Walker was stuff. saying he's bought a car every prep. <laughs> <laughs> why not? Fuck it. I guess if you've got the liquid cash flow, why not? <laughs> I usually buy stupid weird shit like uh, like shelving containers and stuff for my garage and new furniture and crap like that that I don't need. I dropped a thousand dollars on Warhammer Forty K in my last prep. <laughs> <laughs> I just started doing that. I even bought my um uh, uh like fiance a, a, an army. Actually, maybe she bought it. I can't remember. I think I bought it for her though. But yeah, we we both got got it because we were both prepping, and I managed to get her into Warhammer, which was pretty cool. Like the miniatures and all. Yeah, so I got her, or she got, I should say, a thousand Suns army, uh -huh. like Chaos Space Marines, and mm -hmm. I got uh the it's a new army that they kind of bought into the universe it's the one that uh um henry cavill plays the custodies oh okay. yeah it's a custodian guard and they they were spoken about a little bit in like the old kind of 40k law but they never really had models for them until the like more recent editions that's tight yeah we're, I, we're hitting, hitting a good oh, spot yeah. here oh, with the Warhammer. Yeah, we're, we're gonna we're gonna enter the geek phase real quick yeah i i <laughs> i'm not as familiar with warhammer 40k i uh I'm fairly familiar with the fantasy Warhammer, but uh, back in the that day, I'm cool. I'm from the era of miniature gaming, tabletop gaming, where the figurines were still like metal; <laughs> they were still pewter. <laughs> 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 yeah, <laughs> I don't I don't know. The, the The guys at the shop were just as surprised as me. We went in there, and I think that it was so funny because you know you know what guys are like at the Warhammer stores; like they're very socially awkward. They, they have like enough very time suave, having a conversation yeah. with a guy, let alone a girl. A female walks in, and it's that whole reaction they all turn. It's like, girl. It's <laughs> awesome. This yeah, might be exactly. the greatest screen name ever: Small Nut Reuter. <laughs> that's pretty good. Yeah, it's got a ring to it. Yeah. yeah. Rolls oh, there's Tommy. Tommy. It applies up, to Tommy? Tommy. Yo, what's hey, up, guys? <laughs> Is my audio okay? Team Skip and I. It's shit. Get off. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I didn't want to get kicked off right away. <laughs> nah, Tommy, nah, tell, tell tell Skip to get his ass out of bed. I told him to come on, and he said it's too early. Man, he he'll probably be up around two, three p.m. That's that's his normal schedule. It's been that way for years. He's like, that's too early for me. So Scott, how are you feeling early. after your show, man? I'm good. I feel great. Um, you know, of course, you you feel a little bit lost without the routine of like, you know, cardio, yeah, clothing, all that stuff. But um, the pumps are insane. Training's been awesome. Um, I'm definitely hungry, um, even though I'm using some terzepatide to help with that and still a lot of nicotine. Um, but yeah, it's good. I, I feel great. I feel like a huge sense of relief um, for sure. Well, you look great, man. You, you came out there great. Now it's time to grow. 
Yep. What's next for you? What are you doing next? Um, at least a year of off season. Um, I might do a show in like May or June of next year, um, or wait a whole nother year. We'll see. Are you going to uh, do a national show? I, I qualified for nationals. I'm not doing nationals this year. I'm not definitely not ready to compete there yet. You um, should do one next year. You got it's two years. You're qualified. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I do want to come in and like win in overall at a local show first. Um, just to feel like I'm really ready. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I was amazed. I learned about some new national shows I didn't even know existed, talking to some of the guys backstage. Um, really? I thought I thought there were only four, but there are five. No, no. Oh, uh, more than that. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think. There's USA's, North Americans, there's um, Team Universe, there's Nationals, um, Trying to think. Then there's the master shows too. There's junior nationals and junior nationals. I, yeah. What I didn't know existed is junior USA's. That's junior amazing. USA's. Yeah, junior there USA's. Are. What's up, Ryan? Hey guys, how you doing, man? Um, Tommy, you're competing. You're in prep right now, right? Yeah. So I'm uh, 11 weeks out now. Awesome. How's how's prep going? Um, this year it's actually going pretty good. Um. I had a big drop this week, which was kind of alarming. It's one of those things where things might start being running away a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah, that um, happens to me. Yeah, so we'll we'll probably start maybe even increasing food a little bit uh, until things calm down a bit. Um, I'm likely going to be a heavyweight this year. We we were thinking about going for light heavy, but um, my condition's quite good for where I am right now. It's so. Really good. Tommy, let me see his pictures. It's really good. Mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, so I, I think we're in a spot where um, we'll probably shoot for heavyweight. And, um, you know, it's it's always – you never know if you want to be the smallest guy in the class but the most shredded or do you want to come in the heaviest at the top end of the class. You know, it's always kind of a, a – I would go I would go heavyweight. Light heavy is the most competitive division in, in – It is, yeah. You know, it's your bodybuilding. I mean, like – you go to you go to like when I was at nationals, the national shows last year. Like, it seemed like half the competitors were light heavyweights. Yeah, there's a lot of light heavies. Um, the last show I did, I think there were like twenty. It was it was wow. a lot. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, Justin Compton has this client, uh, Joe Palacios, I think is his mm. name, mm -hmm. um, and they were talking about him winning nationals, and he thought he was going to be a heavyweight. And at the very end, Justin was just like, no, we're just going to feed you a little bit more. And he was at the very bottom of supers hmm. and he won the overall. Um, yeah, so I don't think you have to be at the top of the weight class to win. No, I don't think so either. It's more of like a personal anxiety. Um, and we all know that a lot of supers are pretty fat on stage. <laughs> yeah, I'll just be honest. Of that. The, the, the that, majority that of, yeah, majority of supers that I've seen, at least at my local shows, I mean... I've seen maybe one with semi good conditioning and um, you know, guys get in their head and they get hung up on these certain weights and weight classes that they feel they need to be in for whatever reason. It's, it's likely an ego thing or whatever. Um, but a lot of times it gets them into trouble and they, they don't bring the best package. Yeah. Justin Harris always talks about that. He said, a conditioned super heavy is com either a pro or competing for a pro card. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. You're, there, there are no, there are no good super heavies at local shows. No, generally. Hey, yeah. Tommy, can I, can I Go text ahead. all some of your pictures? He doesn't have yeah. to share them. Just yeah, so of can, course. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm really impressed with how you look right now. I appreciate that. He can put them up if he wants. Well, Tommy's got the biggest calves I've ever seen on a human being. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> your back yeah, is on the way too. It's funny. I joke like, you know, we can be in a grocery store and my wife could have no shirt on at all, and people will still look at my calves. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, I feel like the hot girl in a bar sometimes when I wear shorts. <laughs> <laughs> my eyes are um, up here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Very nice yeah. Yeah, you're. You're. It's. It's. I've never seen such big calves on a human being before. <laughs> Uh, let me see. Does Skip coach you, Tommy? Yeah, Skip coaches me. Cool. Yeah. 
I, I I worked with Skip back. I don't know. He probably doesn't even remember. I I couldn't I couldn't keep up with his diet, man. I, I like I would lose my mind on that uh, on that uh, skip load day, and just sure. like my skip load turned into an entire week. Yeah, th- <laughs> things things have changed. Um, things have changed with Skip on on how he does his skip loading and things like that. They've evolved over time. Um, you know, that would be more traditional skip loading where you load heavy on traditional foods, five guys, whatever, heavy breakfast food, things like that. Um, things have evolved and he approaches each client a little different too. Um, some guys have a metabolism like Kurt where you need to load him on something a little heavier with fat and things like that. You know, Kurt can get away with that stuff. Some guys can't. So like right now, half my load meals are more clean and then the other half I'll get a little dirty with, I guess you could say. Right. Yeah. I just, uh, I don't, yeah, I haven't talked to, I don't know how Skip does it now. So, um, but yes, yeah, I, I just lost, I end up losing my mind. Justin keeps me fat and carbs. So that works for me. Yes. Yeah, Skip, a, our carbs are pretty high during the week. Not high. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. yeah when he I doesn't, he doesn't do like low low carb anymore um that you know who did that a lot was dave palumbo yeah dave, dave palumbo would keep guys like really really low in carbs and then just smash them with like fast food and like yeah mcdonald's was his like favorite thing wasn't it McDonald's. <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. so i think people sometimes think that's skip loading and it it's not i think there's a misconception of it sometimes and um skips like yeah i don't bother correcting people anymore <laughs> he's like i'm too old and tired you know <laughs> yeah. but kurt, kurt's been helping me with um my blood work and things like that um making sure i stay healthy and um helping with the supplement side of things here's uh there's well it's hard my um my stupid um computer won't share the pictures directly but yeah you look good man legs Thank look you. great yeah He's got uh, yeah. tech miners in already. How, yeah. how many weeks out are you? Uh, this oh, is 11, 11 this morning. Oh yeah, you're too. you're in you're in a good spot for eleven weeks out, man. Yeah, I appreciate mm. it. I was yeah. um, I'm two twenty one here. Wow. Yeah, you're nice. you're definitely not going to be a light heavy. Yeah, I don't think so. I I don't think it's worth um, sacrificing potentially a lot of muscle to have to get there. Um, yeah, I could get there because I'm dumb enough just to struggle and make it through. But um, I just I don't, don't know. Be, I don't, I don't think, think it's going to be worth for it. You. Yeah. Oh, there's. How tall are you? Joey I'm five D. five nine five Hello, ten. What's up, Joey? What's up, guys? Joey's one of my clients. Uh, Joey's got the biggest arms in the gym. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy's got the calves. Joey's got the 23 inch arms, and I'm not there joking. You go. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> close. We're getting that. It's funny. <laughs> yeah. I have the same, rela- I have a very similar relationship with Tommy that I do with Joey. That seems to be my, that's like oh, my Kurt, new coach. This is with Tommy? This is with Tommy we were talking about. We're having a hard time hearing you, Joey. You're kind of muffled. Oh, my bad. I'm going to hop. Um, but you, yeah. You do something similar with him, Kurt? I have, I probably have 10 guys now that, uh, <laughs> oh, nice. that seems to be my role. <laughs> the, gear, the gear guru. Yeah. Hey, Kurt, just make sure I don't die. <laughs> That's his role. <laughs> <clears throat> hey, you, you aren't bodybuilding if you aren't on death's door. Yeah. You gotta be yeah. close at least, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I guess yeah. it's an, it's an interesting place as a coach to be. Cause I think a lot of coaches don't want to deal with that end of it. Maybe right? not. So, and I'm comfortable dealing with that end. So like I, you know what I mean? Like I'm comfortable making those decisions with you, right? Where I don't, yeah. you, you clearly yeah. have the food end covered. You don't need me. Right. Exactly. There's actually, and that's the thing is like, I'm not going to use it, but there's a, there's pros as well that use me for that role. Like they don't yeah. need my advice on how to lift weights or what chicken to eat, but right. um, it gets more as, as a lot of you guys know, if you get more advanced in bodybuilding, the gear gets more complicated. And the chemicals get a little crazier and the risk of injury is really there yeah whether people want to believe that or not like there's a definite risk of harming yourself 
Yeah, I mean, it's a fine line to walk. I mean, if you're sick, you're not, you know, that's another thing, too. If you're sick, you're not going to look good. Yeah. Um, right. I think people don't consider that, too. It's, um, you, and you, it, won't, I, you won't grow either. No. Yeah. It was interesting talking to, I did that interview with Wesley Vissers, was a week before last, and he talked about how this was the least, I think he said that he's run on a prep since he's been a pro. I look good he looked. Yeah. 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 yeah, and I think that changes over time, um, especially when you're on his level. Like, I I think you can get away with less, you know, as as you get up in those ranks. Like, I'm sure Nick Walker doesn't run the same that he used to. He might, I don't know, but um, no, I bet he, he could get less. Yeah, I'm sure he could get away with less than he used to be able to. You know, on the way up, I think it it takes more. Um, to build that initial size and everything like that. It was interesting talking to Wesley. He said he's still under the weight cap. He said he's still got like another oh, wow. five, really? six pounds he can go up. That's massive for him. Yeah. So I I thought he was I thought he would be at the top of the weight cap, but he said no. Mm-hmm. Is that um, with looking down? Because you can easily add another five pounds to that with like dehydration and water manipulation too. yeah yeah i don't know he said he, he said he's got room that's what he told me he said so he was yeah. going to work on bringing up his legs um and he said legs hamstrings glutes he said he was going to work on bringing up that that's his he feels like that's what he needs to compete with chris yeah i guess he could use like maybe a little more sweep or something but i mean his physique yeah. is it's great I, he's got a it's a fantastic good. physique i mean yeah. i think he's in a Really good spot to take on, take on Chris. I, I agree with you though, Tommy. I think he needs a little bit more sweep. Like from from his front shots, his front double bicep, they're kind of just like flat. Like he didn't really have much. Yeah. Yeah, action, like, that's ex- that's exactly what I get out of it. That's too. the downside of being six three. I know. I know about <laughs> exactly. that. Like, yeah. I get people all the time tell me like, like, dude, you need to bring your legs up. They're small. And I'm like, my my quads are thirty two inches, man. Right. Like, yeah. like they don't. I know they look small. It's just my legs are so damn long. I don't know how how big they would have to be for them to look in proportion. You know, look with yeah. like thirty six inches. I don't right. know. Probably. Right. Probably. You need those big ra- big Rammy quads. You know, where they just yeah. they just look like beats. You know, upside yeah. down beats. And then big ass adductors too. I mean, a mm-hmm. lot of the time people don't realize in their side chest and stuff. It's not about adding more hamstring size, it's about adding more meat to your adductor. So when you push that back leg into that front thigh, it pushes that hamstring out. Like, cause people were saying to me in some of my recent check-in posts on Instagram, like, oh, like your, your hamstrings are getting like offensive level big. And I was like, it's just my doctors. Like I push my leg into my doctor and it just spreads it out and it makes it look so much bigger than it actually is. It's all, that's what bodybuilding is. A lot of it's smoke and mirrors, honestly. Well, we do, I do a dedicated, adductor and um hamstring day that's i have i I have a quad focus day and then i have a a adductor that was a big thing i remember when i dante trudell used to train me was training adductors he was big on training adductors and i think they really kind of act as a hamstring too um yeah they're they're really involved with you know a lot of the same movements so i mean it it only makes sense to train them yeah exactly well, this is fun getting some people on here, some new faces. Yeah, I, it was interesting though talking to Wesley. I mean, uh, like he he said he just ran test and master on through pretty much his whole prep. He said he sprinkled a little bit of trend in at the end when he needed it, and he said he only used um, Anavar as an oral as needed. He said he didn't use it every day. He said just like if he needed an extra push mm. on a day when he pulled yeah, the trend out, right? What, what's that, Scott? Sorry, sorry, Kurt. I was just gonna say, in classic, like the waist is so important. You can't go heavy with the orals. No. Yeah. yeah. I was just gonna say he pulled the trend out early as well, right? I believe so, or maybe it was the fat burners. I don't recall. No. Yeah. For the Olympia, when I interviewed him for the Olympia, I think he said he pulled the trend out early, and he runs just the mast in with a little bit of test. Mm. What do you think that is for Kurt to dry him out more or something, or? I almost think it's like if you don't need it, 
right? Like everybody's yeah. different. I don't. Th I think that's the problem is we all try to come up with these like statements that like encompass everyone and like sure. what you use is very different. Yeah. What Paul uses, like I know pretty much everyone on this platform I know, except Ryan. I know everyone's what everyone basically runs, and like not a single person here runs the same thing in the same amount. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't Roman say he didn't run Trend last year? He didn't. Yeah, he didn't didn't run Trend at all for all, any of his nine shows. Yeah. Um, the thing the thing with Trend, like the way I see it, guys, and I mean, feel free to throw your two cents in as well. You use Trend obviously to inhibit muscle loss. It's anti-catabolic. So Wesley obviously, well, the way I use it and the way Wesley must use it is he used it on the way down while he was digging to preserve muscle tissue. And then when he reached his conditioning he needed, which was probably before his show, like the reason why he pulled it out, he's slowly titrating food back up and potentially reversing into the show. So mm. he's not getting that same risk of muscle wastage now. He's got food increasing, which is anti-catabolic. And also pulling the trend out is going to take uh, more of a... a basically a stress off of his kidneys and then yeah. his glomular filtration is going to improve his um water balance in general and the ability to kind of basically just balance fluid in the body is going to be superior and he won't have any kind of like lingering fluid in his legs he'll have sharper lines deeper cuts in his legs and i think that's the reason why i did it like cosmetic and also like just the i guess the, the health aspect of it it's like if you don't like it so if you don't need it why have it in there it's just a yeah. People just so many people just throw everything in the kitchen sink. Like it's usually you guys see it, the amateur bodybuilders and um, anyone here coaching too. It's like you always get that question. It's like, oh, when are we adding in training? It's like, well, if we need to add it in, we will. But if not, we're not adding it in. Like, yeah, like Tom, I, I, I don't disagree with that at all. He did mention, um, I forget which show it was. He said it during COVID. He said it was the most he ever ran, and he ran a ton of trend in in orals. And he said that he had a film of water over him that he couldn't get rid of yeah i know for too. me i because I, I only have one kidney for me if, when trends in there i do have that like weird film like i might get leaner and stay harder but like i don't look as dry yeah yeah i do better with like just matt like i do better when i pull tests too the problem is i lose size but like i do better on just a dht right and i feel yeah. like trend would um almost if you're already ready to start filling out trend might get in the way of that yeah. you know it, it yeah. might actually impair the ability to fill out properly almost like almost like yeah. clan in a, in a way right yeah. similar different yeah, mechanism where, like the same. yeah where it just munches yeah. through the food and and you're not absorbing it and filling out and it's not yeah. having yeah. an yeah. effect on like hemodialysis like other drugs that was kind mm -hmm. of the benefit when when they were using it for hrt as uh parabol and is that at a normal dose, it wasn't causing red blood cell count to increase versus mm -hmm. testosterone would, right? When they bought the test up to help anemia, obviously it's going to go up. And when they used it to bring, you know, bone mass up, it would break the red blood cell count where a place where it was just not healthy anymore, where mm -hmm. trend didn't do that. And so we see that, like you're saying, it keeps you kind of flat and kind mm -hmm. of hard to flow. Exactly. And, like, yeah. and Paul and I have talked about this numerous times, like the guys that run trend all year round never grow, right? It's really hard to get big, mm -hmm. like, yeah. it's like anti- Productive, I guess. Yeah, I could see that. No, someone's gonna argue with me about that, but <laughs> sure. Man, not, nothing. I don't know what it is with me. <clears throat> when I start taking trend, I I feel like shit. But man, my physique just transforms within like two weeks. Yeah, it's quite rapid. It is. Yeah. Mine does that initially, but then it goes south real quick. <laughs> it's like <laughs> yeah, exactly. a few, few weeks. A few weeks of getting better. Then it's like, all right, the wheels are starting to come off now. I've got that fluid film of like. I feel shit. Like you can just tell that your kidneys are taking a hit because your energy levels just plummet. I like, think a lot think of that is a, mental yeah. too. Um, just because after yeah. after three four weeks of just in my experience shitty sleep, it's like is it the drug that's fucking you up or is it the diet and the lack of sleep and just the overall mm. stressful situation? You know. Yeah, that's true. It's probably the it's probably the lack of sleep and the stress. Yeah, because yeah, when, you know, when guys do run, stuff. yeah, when guys do run trend in the off season, you don't hear about as many side effects, right? Well, it's because they're not hungry and angry, you know, and, and they're probably okay. sleeping a little better. Yeah, probably. True, yeah. Yeah, yeah it didn't yeah, affect I mean, my you... sleep at all, surprisingly. The only side effect I got was um, sweats at night. 
and yeah, the sweat oh, smelling absolutely disgusting. Yeah, but that, yeah, that went away that after a month. Ammonia. It's horrible. Yeah, you, w- you wake up to piss and you come back to a cold, wet bed. It's like, oh, yeah. sweet. <laughs> <laughs> my, my partner, she loves what I it smell like on trend. <laughs> <laughs> She'll just put her face on my chest and sniff me. <laughs> oh, we got another guy on here, Matthew. Let's see if Matthew's got a question. What's up, I'm Matthew? I'll, I'll talk to you guys hey, later. You, Scott. You, Scott. Can you hear me, Scott? So. Yeah, I can hear you. You got a question, my man? Well, actually, no. I was uh because I'm a client of Skips as well. I was. Uh, oh, just... another Jesus! Oh, tell, no. tell, the, tell the motherfucker I'm, to get I'm out a... of bed early, man, and come on here. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm actually I'm I'm Sharp Home Solutions on the. Oh, the, okay. The, oh, that's so, you. okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no. Anyway, it was uh, one thing you were mentioning was it's I call it the nuclear look. It's like when people throw everything in the kitchen sink out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> their, their preps and you towards the end of their their prep, they get this look that's. Like they might be in shape, but it's something. like a drugged look. Yeah, Dr- yeah, like yeah. just Toxic you can almost look. you yeah. can almost see the toxicity. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, um, like back years ago when I went to Dave um, Palumbo's diet guru class when he first <laughs> moved to Cape Coral, he argued with me for an hour in the class. It was right when Jason Lowe turned pro, and there was a lot of other pros in there. And I said, and and a lot like Scooby Prep and people over the years were arguing with me that. I was having issues with clenbuterol causing hyperglycemia. Dave told me no. Scooby I mean, told me I no. Had the same issue, man. People told me I was nuts, and I was and I was friends with Boston Lloyd at the time as well. And you know, Boston used to have his guys run ECA, Clen, all kinds of stuff all year. And I I was sitting in the class, and I told Dave, I was like, no, listen, you will go, you will go hyperglycemic with clenbuterol over a period of time, and he argued to me that it didn't happen and i eventually a year later he recanted that but it's that it's that toxicity i think that when you've got all these compounds working against each other it just destroys the look and causes secondary and tertiary issues that you you, it's hard to source long story long yeah yeah Yeah. all all beta-3 agonists flip that like mess with the sodium potassium pump so it's gonna cause it can cause that because you're not transporting the glucose correctly anymore. Right. That's the carb load on it. Like if guys try to run it into shows, like they never fill out right. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, right. Similar to yeah. diuretics. Like yeah, when so you run a diuretic, you can't fill out properly because of the same thing. It messes with your electrolyte balance. Yeah. 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 So that's how, you're not transporting everything right. Well, that's yeah. what I was saying. Keep it simple, stupid. It's like, look, if if there was a magic bullet to this, somebody'd have been doing it. And so yeah. you know, use the the minimum effective dose. I saw a guy the other day saying, well, I want to increase my T4 to like 200 micrograms. What are the issues going to be? And it's like, you don't really need that. It's not going to, it's not going to convert to anything extra. Yeah. Your TSH can only get so low on your blood work. It's like, once once it's zero, where do you go from there? Right. Just more reverse T3 and bullshit like that. Right. Exactly. That's what I told him. I was like, I was like, look, you can you're you can go from fifty to a hundred micrograms, but any more than that, you're going to have reverse T three issues. So and and it's only going to convert what you can utilize. So, what are you trying to do by increasing that? It's like mm-hmm. stop being lazy and increase your neat is what I would say. When for all, and all the people out here that carb load or skip load or whatever, you're going to help with the reverse T three anyway because it's going to respond to glucose. That's yeah. reverse T three goes up. Yeah, when that's you're the point, when of, you're that's dying the too point of skip loading. Exactly, yeah. you're basically yep. stopping that slowdown, that adaptation. Yep, that's mm-hmm. that's the, the one of the main reasons you skip load is to right. knock down that cortisol, knock down the reverse T three, and start yeah. fresh. You know, there's other things that yeah. help. Females, but, but it's females why pretty much average. every coach, oh. right? Like all of you got like. We all do that. I know AJ Sims does that. Like that's just why pretty much everyone that gets lean and hard does some sort of carb load. Yeah, I thought. Yeah. I thought the main benefit was waffles. Yeah, well, that, that, is one of the, that, that is one of the main benefits. And actually, like I was explaining to Tommy earlier, like Skip and I, it, it's it's uncanny how similar we are in our approaches. Yeah, because like nobody nobody knows me, and I am nobody to the industry. But I've I've been around for many 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 years. Um, and just kind of, uh, inculcated myself through other coaches. And I'm not, I say that with radical humility, but it's, it's funny that the, 
it, everybody has a variation of it. They everybody. Do. I it's, say the it, same thing. Yep. It's it's like it's nobody's different. Like the Dave Palumbo's and mm. the and the cheeseburgers and and fries yeah. and um but it's what I Skip and I've talked about over the years is like he used to be more on like the I, I'll call it dirty because there's just lack for lack of a better term, you know, just like junkier foods. Yep. But what I've trained myself, like Scott Stevenson's talked about, is each skip load now I treat like a mock peak. So and, and I've done that for the past 20 weeks of my diet and I have 14 more to go. I've been in a holding pattern for like six weeks because I can't I got to land the plane and. 20 weeks is a long time to land a plane. Um, but I've literally been eating the exact same things and yep. it's and it's foods that assimilate well. So literally how sexy my skip loads get, because uh, Paul was mentioning earlier, like, oh, you know, the diet kills me. The reality is if you eat the same things every week and you know your limits, meaning you're not going out and getting a dozen donuts and cookies, like for me, peanut butter and jelly rice cakes is as sexy as I can get before I have that craving issue propensity moving into the week. Um, yeah. And it depends where you're at in the diet. Like right. at this point, cause I was doing mainly bison, rice and fruit for my skip loading. And now at this point I dropped 10 pounds. So skips like we got to bring some of that traditional food in and just right. see what happens. Right. Right. Um, but yeah, once I start, once that traditional food touches your mouth, it's like the floodgates oh, open no. and you're <laughs> right. just ready to go. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. And it's like I try to, I try to coach my wife as well, not like coach, but she's she works with Skip as well. Yeah. Just explaining to her like, look, this isn't your Skip loads aren't how many satiating um, no. foods you can eat. It's what do I digest well and yeah. like for me. I'm 5'11", and I'll probably be in the top of the middle or low, of, uh, you know, the lower end of the other weight class. And the the reality is I can't eat enough food on my skip loads. My body does run away. Yep. So I have to, like, I literally get a mixing bowl, you know, like that you mix freaking cakes in. And I fill it with um, Rice Krispie cereal, uh, uh, Frosted Flakes, and then a bunch of fruit. And then I eat a bunch of rice cakes. I have to get as many calories in as I can. Otherwise, I can't eat enough food in a day. Do you uh, set Do you set time parameters on your skip loading, like for the duration of the meal? Um, I don't. So, like I said before, I, I don't. Skip does that with certain clients because they'll run. I do, run, it, I do run, it with mine. Yeah. yeah, they'll run away with the day. Yeah. They'll turn one meal in <laughs> yes. to, a, to a month's worth of calories. Yeah, but yeah. no, no. For me, um, so I'll do my my insulin. Uh, about 30 minutes before I eat, yep. um, you know, 15 or 20 units. Cause, cause again, I'm eating a ton of food. Yep. So 15 or 20 units. And then right as I'm starting to go hypo, I'll introduce the, the, the skip load. Um, but it's, it only takes me about 30 minutes to get that down. Cause again, it's easily oh yeah, uh, edible food. It's just, it's just cereal. And I think, then I think that insulin helps with getting that food down to, a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah I really that, think it does. Yeah. That's why I do it pre meal and not <clears throat> post. Because I like I like to that whenever I don't know about you guys, but whenever I start to go hypo, I do get ravenous. Um, Food yeah, tastes it's, better too. It it's right. Because awesome. <laughs> <Right. laughs> well, yeah. your it's because your body needs it. It's like you know <laughs> kids in Africa eating rocks because they need calcium. You know? Right. It's like. Mm. Your body yep. needs those carbs like right now. Yeah. But then yeah. the other thing that we've done a little bit different, well, I've done different this year specifically, um, is my last meal. Because back, you know, years ago when I was skip loading, it was like a free for all. And I've just realized that that doesn't work. Like, you know, you're seeing higher fasting blood glucose levels throughout the week if you do that. So for me now, that last meal, I get that. I get that first one in and then I get a, a big second meal in, but it's typically just a huge salad and then just a normal meal of like beef, shrimp, rice, yeah. and then, and then, it, and then rice cakes at the end of the night with peanut butter and jelly, just because yeah. I need to get more in. I don't want to assume anything, but you're not 25, 30 years old anymore either. No, so, I, I'm, I'm, I'm almost, I'm, I'm, I'm in my mid thirties. I'm 30, uh, I'll be 36 this year. Okay, so we need to worry about our waste and things like that. Correct. And if you're distending it with a skip load every single week that you can't keep tight, how are you going to get on stage and expect 
to hold your midsection the whole time, right? Right. Mm -hmm. um, and I know Skip probably talks about that with you. And, yeah. Um, it, yeah. And it's and it's it's mitigating that in the off season as well. Right. Hundred percent. Right? So when when you're it, when you're Skip because he does skip load most people through the off season. Yep. Um, it's mitigating it then. Like don't eat like a jackass. Yep. It that it, it, just because you're in the off season is no excuse to overindulge. Um, yeah. You know, and, and again, in the off season, eating foods that you can assimilate because that's most people. The misconception with the skip loads not to go on this tirade of skip loads because that's not why right. I go. Yeah, I apologize but, for starting that. <laughs> yeah, it's okay, but I feel like the this misconception is a team skip podcast. <laughs> yeah, okay. but, but the the huge misconception is like because Ben Chow back in the day was talking about how or, or Luke Sandler right. was talking about how Ben Chow would just eat donuts and cookies on his skip load. That might work for for Juan Morel and Ben Chow. But yeah, it Kurt. doesn't. Yeah, right. But it doesn't. It doesn't work for ninety nine percent of anybody else because right. you will feel like you'll feel like shit for five days. Yeah, um, and if you and lose, actually, if you lose your appetite in the off season, you're screwed. Yep. Right. Especially if there's foods that you haven't been eating on a regular basis too. You throw something like that into yeah. your stomach, like it's like a, a nuclear warhead. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. I'm very uh, careful I, with my food I, choices anymore. Same. Yeah. Right. I spoke with one of my attorneys because I own I own a real estate practice in Tampa Bay, and um, and I was speaking with one of my attorneys the other day who she's she's very heavy and she has been having issues that are identical to GERD, um, and and I told her I was like, well, the issue, uh, what well, my theory is, is you're you're eating these foods that don't assimilate you're having a digestional issues with them and you're just bloated, gassy, distended, etc. cetera. Um, but that, and going back to the skip load, that's what a lot of people experience as well is they get like a modified version of GERD, maybe, yeah. maybe not for an extended period of time, but for two to three days where, you know, you just feel like you're about to have a heart attack because you've got indigestion from this food. <laughs> um, you know, like you said, the second you can't eat, you're, you're not valuable in this industry or you're not valuable to yourself. Mm -hmm. And then the, uh, when the esophageal sphincter can't close up and it opens, that's when the acid can come back up the esophagus mm -hmm. and cause those GERD symptoms. So another thing that causes it, in addition to like eating bad foods like that is you think about the reason why people are overweight in the first place. They usually eat a shitload of food, not just high calorie foods, but mm -hmm. a lot of food. And so the sheer volume just doesn't allow, it's like backed up. It doesn't allow the sphincter to close. Then you just get this, like when they lay down or sit down, lean back, they get this kind of like backwash and, yeah, it's, it's a bad, it's a bad thing to experience. Yeah, a lot well, of the times. I uh, found out, I didn't know, ahead. I had GERD, or I, what I thought was GERD, and uh, the doctor found out I have a hiatal hernia, and he said it's very oh. common in <laughs> guys that lift weights. Very <laughs> common. He said a lot of times they don't know it. Oh, All right, Matthew, we appreciate you coming on, man. we got to get to take some questions. Thank hey, you for Matthew. your support, brother. Sorry, for Matthew. Sure, guys. Thank your, you, guys. Uh, what's your Instagram? uh yeah. nothing it's a uh, razor sharp <laughs> fitness uh sure. no just one and if you if you go to skips tags you'll see me every once in a while I'm nothing impressive just a just a lanky uh little guy no all good dude i'll follow you all right matthew thank you for Appreciate coming you on see you have a great day guys take care see ya. all right let's get some questions in here um, all right uh well we have one from uh our resident troll, Emperor Xi, for you, Paul. Uh, how did you lose your loose skin without a big ass scar? Um, I do have a big ass scar. I got a mini tummy tuck done. Um, I put a video up about it. It's pretty much faded. The guy, I don't know, the surgery, I, uh, I, I did it, shit, six years ago, five years ago, something like that. Um, but the guy did a pretty good job. I'm going to stand up. I don't know if you can see it or not, but. Oh, it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can see it. It uh, when when I get a tan done, it sits like right along my posing trunk line, so you can't you can't really see it. That's but when I get a when I get a tan done, it like makes it it like highlights it. It makes it show out more. Yeah. A growth hormone help too. But yeah, I did a mini tummy tuck. He took off a piece of skin. Like he had to move my belly button, had to reconstruct my belly button. He took off a piece of skin that they showed me afterwards. It was about six inches 
wide. Did, did they let belly. you take it home? <laughs> <laughs> I made a I made a mask out of it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so yeah, I had a mini tummy tuck done. There is a video up on my channel if you want to watch about it. Um, I have have the whole video up there. Mm. You've got your uh, Halloween <laughs> Halloween costume sorted. Nice. the face. <laughs> awesome, man. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. <clears throat> Step on. Oh, uh, nice. Awesome. Uh, what did he say? He says awesome. he's competing today in a bodybuilding contest. Oh, nice, uh, man. That's awesome. Good luck, bro. Good luck. See, All right. Uh, we have uh, Salad 2K here contributing swedish krona to ask any tips on how to cure paradoxical insomnia Out of would that be insomnia without <laughs> an explanation <laughs> i get insomnia man i have struggled i have struggled my entire life with insomnia it is it is it gets can get brutal sometimes i don't have so many problems with it anymore i tell you what my my cure has been is 15 units of gh <laughs> yeah, that, that I was going to start yeah, there, yeah. Um, I would look into um, like Stan Efferding's typical sleep hygiene stuff. Is normally yeah, quite he's got good. some good stuff. Yeah, that's somewhere to start. I mean, do you have sleep apnea? Things like that. And a lot of the times when people do have insomnia, there's so much anxiety attached to it that every time you put your head down, all you're thinking about is, I hope I fall asleep. And, yeah. you know, you get your mind going like that and then you get stuck in this negative feedback loop where you can't tell it to shut off. So the entire night you're trying to force yourself to sleep. So, I mean, if maybe you need to stay up a little later until your body's actually tired enough to fall asleep, I, that's helped me in the past. Well, from yeah. what I understand, there's two types. There's the type where you can't fall asleep and then there's the type where you can't stay asleep. And mm -hmm. I have the second type. I usually don't have problems falling asleep, but I'll do this shit where I'll wake up like three, four in the morning. Wide awake. Why the fuck awake? <laughs> yeah, I'll go I'll go pee and I can't go back to sleep. Yeah, you well, start the, thinking about your day and getting it started and yep. Yeah. The two types that you're talking about, I was gonna say, the two types that you're talking about, Paul, are both objective insomnia. It just depends what the cause is. What paradoxal insomnia is basically the perception that you're still awake even though while you're asleep. And so medically oh. no one has to be sure. No one's really sure what that entails or if it's real because during sleep studies you can't really tell if it's so it varies in percentages there's not necessarily a cure it's just the same stuff you would do for objective it's just he goes to sleep and while he's fully asleep his brain is running like he's awake um, oh wow it's actually drive you crazy over time because you never think you're asleep so he's not going into those sleep stages i've never heard of it so That's his nervous wild. system doesn't ever turn mm. Yeah, That's Stan Efferding's not helping you with that, dude. No, so. I mean, <laughs> it, it probably should require, there's probably medicine and mm -hmm. someone. Like, there's I'd, a, say, I'd say a neurologist. Honestly. Yeah, there's a drug called uh, doxepine that's used as an antidepressant in a small amount. I think it's repackaged called uh, Silenor. If you buy it as a generic, though, it helps really well with sleep. It's just, yeah, you have to buy the generic because it's expensive that's wasn't there a netflix show about like issues like that like probably <laughs> they couldn't they couldn't fall asleep or something i i swear there was like a netflix series about that i can't it imagine be, like uh... being in that twilight state that's yeah, gonna be horrible but well, did you ever yeah. unconscious prep i feel like it goes back to trend I, sometimes like do you ever just realize that you're awake all of a sudden yeah. Like you're laying in bed and you're like turning the clock and you're like, I wonder how long I've been awake for. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's like you, con yeah. At least for me, it's a contest prep thing. Like I don't, I'm never sure when I'm actually asleep. I do that when I'm yeah. driving. Like how long have I been sleeping? Gee, that's scary, <laughs> yeah, right? No, too much GH, yeah. I guess. <laughs> I used to, I used to micro sleep when I drove. It was dangerous. Um, yeah, it's, like it's it such was, a bad feeling. Yeah, but it it only happened when I was driving on like a straight, like a highway. I just get, I think it's just my brain got bored. There was yeah. nothing to interact because I've got ADHD and it just switch off. Um, <laughs> but yeah, since I got medicated, it was like a, a hail mary. Um, but I've been struggling in Thailand because I haven't been able to have access to my concerta. So when I get back in Australia, first thing I'm doing is refilling my concerta script. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I've just been surviving off modafinil over here because it's cheaper and it, it was created for narcolepsy anyway, so it helps to a similar degree. Um, 
I was, I was going to say something. Oh yeah, have any of you guys experienced sleep paralysis? That's messed up. Mm. That it's that, like yeah, you have what, right what with that it's horrible. Way. What's that? So like? you, I haven't experienced so you that. Wake pretty up, much. You wake up and you can't move. Oh, okay. Like you're aware you're awake, but you haven't like your body. The, the nervous system hasn't really turned the body on yet. It's a weird feeling. I'll just change my battery one minute. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, heard. Everyone while you're sleeping, it's your brain's way of protecting your body from hurting yourself while you're dreaming. Yeah. Yourself. Like you're having a dream that you're chasing someone or you're yeah. doing something active. If you were to act that out in your sleep, you would hurt yourself. So yeah. it shuts yeah. off yeah. the ability to move. Ah, but you're not okay. supposed to, you generally don't wake up during it. Mm. So like you wake up during it, it's the terrifying because you physically yeah. can't move. Yeah. The, the like messed up thing though. Gave you a nerve yeah. block and you can't feel anything. You, you've had that, Nick? Yeah, but the worst bit is I had it when I was a kid. It's not just the paralysis, it's the um what's the what would you call it? It's like you see a, a weird kind of figure in the corner of your room. It's scary as fuck. And everybody that gets sleep paralysis sees one of these same kind of creatures in the corner of the room. They're just like hmm. like this dark creature and they're just looking at you. Sometimes they'll go onto your chest and they're sitting on your chest and you can feel the, it's fucking weird. Hey? I've heard of this. You feel the pressure of I them like on your chest mm -hmm. and you're just looking at this like this disfigured creature. It's real weird. Hey, like just piercing eyes. It's scary as hell. Like it's enough to like read them, reading about it is enough to give you nightmares. Like it's pretty messed up. Mm -hmm. But I had that as a kid once. It was the freakiest thing I'd ever experienced. Mm -hmm. Luckily, I've never had it since. It's interesting how many people ex report like the sleep paralysis demon. Yeah. <laughs> it's very it's, it, it reminds me of like people who, yeah. who take DMT and, and everybody everybody reports seeing like the you know like the figures of dancing light like the space yeah. elves or whatever you want to call them. I, I'm yeah. glad you you said it, not me, because I don't want to get the <laughs> demonetized. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's a weird experience. Uh, oh, state, state, uh, Stepan, Stepan, I think. I don't know how to pronounce his name, but he said he's experienced it. Oh my yeah, God. Yeah. that's crazy. That's wild. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and then the ghost raped me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, saw, I remember that scene from uh, This Is the End. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> oh, God, something, that very, something very not chill happened last night. That was a funny film. <laughs> it was funny. I forgot about that movie. All right, what do we got next? Let's see here. Um, Suck Smoothie is asking, what are your favorite sources of fat for your rest days? He's been looking at macadamia and avocado for the high monounsaturated fat content and maybe coconut oil for his pre-workout meal. What do you guys think? I wouldn't do coconut oil. Um, I don't know. I think definitely macadamia and avocado are good. But yeah, I'd say that um, if you're into it, I mean, it's not really people go on about it being beneficial for the polyphenol content. It's really not. It's a lot of shit. But if you like dark <laughs> chocolate, have some 85% dark chocolate, like, that's a good source of fat. Um, I only eat it for not polyphenols myself. <laughs> 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 but I mean, even like added fats, like instead of having chicken breast, having like a nice piece of like sockeye salmon is a good way to get some healthy fats in. Yeah. Uh, if you've got yeah. that in your, your budget. I would have curious, me, Nick, why don't you like coconut oil? I can explain. Oh, I, I just, the high, high um, like medium chain saturated fat content, it's just, I don't think it's, as good as something higher in polyamonounsaturated fats, just mm. from the, yeah, that perspective. But like, there's nothing inherently wrong with it, I guess, especially in a deficit. Mm -hmm. If you're in a deficit or in a slight, yeah, you, know, you pretty much are on a rest day usually if your macros are high fat, lower calorie. So it's not going to be that bad. But I mean, I think there's just better, better ways to spend your dietary fats. Okay. That makes sense. And coconut oil is not mostly MCT anyway. It's mostly saturated fat. There's a percent that's yep. MCT. That's a yeah. And so, so people understand the only be benefit of an MCT is that it doesn't use L-carnitine to transport because of the length of the carbon. Yeah. That being said, why does that matter? Right. And no, I'm not fielding any questions on L-carnitine ever again. Um, <laughs> uh, the, 
I would say the, when you look, I did a video with Dr. Dean on that and the way it's burned and stored. Yeah. If you look at the order though, that things are burned and stored, technically monounsaturated fats are the easiest to store. So you would store poly the least, saturated second, and then mono the most. Something like olive oil is not healthy because of the monounsaturated fat. It's healthy because of, like yeah. you said, the polyphenols. Your body can make oleic acid on its own. It makes plenty of it from yeah. steric acid. So there's no, there's no need. That's why those are not essential acids. I wouldn't, I mean, there's nothing wrong with avocado or macadamia, but why are you adding fat that your body doesn't need to your is, diet just to add calories yeah. in? Is there, uh, some, some is there a reason? Like uh, that. Yeah, that, that's true. Is there a reason why he cares if it's a rest day or training day, or is, did he just add that? Um, probably uh, carb cycling with, with, oh, okay. with, with, with yeah. Justin's carb cycling on the, but even, even if you add like a nut, like, you know, almond or walnut, I mean, it's not like you're getting a ton of trace carbs from those and you're getting some fiber in. And, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. I, I, not, I, not so I normally do like walnut or something like that. Mm. But see, walnuts actually have ALA. So they're like, there is an essential fatty acid in walnuts. They're much better for you. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think that nuts yeah. and then um, sunflower seeds, uh, pumpkin seeds, they're good as well. Like they, they're pretty I've done high those, um, yeah. polyunsaturated fatty acids. Yeah. So, yeah, like, like Kurt said, like steering clear more of the saturated and the mono and steering more towards things with a higher ratio of poly is the way to go. Um, I Somebody put on here about uh, coconut oil and MCT upsetting their stomach. Yeah, for me, it's instant shit my pants. Same. Yeah, it destroys my stomach. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I will blow my guts out on on that stuff. I remember Todd used to have me run the diets with a lot of MCT and coconut oil in them. Mm. Um, I wish he was on to talk about it, but yeah, Justin on the carb cycling on the low day, you'll pull the carbs way down. Even on contest prep, sometimes it's down to zero carbs, mm -hmm. and then he'll have me put in things like uh, nuts, nut butters. Um, yeah. black oil fish oil yeah you still um, want some fiber I a mean, little I... bit of olive oil avocado mm -hmm. oil yeah, and you don't want to be running on just protein i mean what a no. shitty force of atp that is yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. all right what do we I, next? i have to get going guys so i'll see everybody all right see you next, see you next week see you see you uh rack poll has a question for kurt he said uh last week you seemed to disagree with todd on the benefits of daily injections on medium esters like an anthate would you be able to discuss the lack of necessity versus any benefits okay um uh, so things like testosterone and anthate cipidate were invented in the 1950s to eliminate the need of a daily injection so first of all it's, it's not an accurate statement to say it's required right why would it be required it's not test suspension so it, chemically, it's not required. Second of all, there are benefits. Certain people see benefits from daily injections versus other people. I would say the two biggest things you see, at least in the bodybuilding community, are dose dependent. So like you get a big guy who's using a, a huge amount of testosterone. He's going to be injecting every day just to cut down on the volume of an injection over the course of a week. That's a different scenario. Um, you, technically, it's going to manipulate the way you aromatize to estrogen, the conversion to DHT to some degree. DHT is kind of a fixed variable within each individual. Um, and you will, sex hormone binding globulin will also move depending. So like someone like me, I do better with a bigger bolus, so a little bit less infrequently, like every other day than I do with daily. Um, so it's just the problem. I, I don't love absolute statements, and I don't love absolute mm -hmm. statements that go against 70 years of chemistry. It seems really asinine to me to make a statement, no offense to Todd, but you can't, it, it doesn't make any sense. If it's have, pro, yeah, you should probably use it every day or every other day. I have yeah. noticed, Kurt, and I don't know what you have this, what, what you think about this, but I have noticed a pretty significant difference in aromatization when I inject. Oh, yeah, day. absolutely. Yeah. I'm yeah. a low aromatizer, so I don't need to. Yeah. You, you yeah I mean, that, I can run 1,200 tests with no AI. I don't need I'm, to. And that's I mean, something I'm, I'm guys, talking about like half, like what oh, I was. Yeah, 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 it makes a big difference. But yeah. that's something so guys me, should know about themselves and then they can take advantage of that ability to be able to swap those. Like if you know you're a guy that aromatizes a lot, then yeah, you should lean towards more frequent stuff. And if you know you're a guy that might actually need a little more estrogen, then maybe you do something less frequent, right? 
or up yeah. the nose. Yeah, and it's not, and I don't disagree with daily injections. It depends on the person. I don't agree with. I don't like blanket statements that you know sum up things. Especially like if it were test suspension, clearly it needs to be used often. There's no ester there. That yeah. being said, there's a reason why these things were invented, and that you know, and that's been proven over seventy years. Just because that now it's like bodybuilders love to come up with these antidotal you know, artificial science things that they create in their house, like with no clinical experience, no research experience. And they're just like, you know, come to the summation of how things should be used or the way they were designed. And it's like, unfortunately, that's just not the way it works. And it's very right. ritualistic in nature. Usually like guys will just come up with this like ritual that they have to follow and they just try to force it down everybody's throats. So it's yeah. not a, yeah, like, like everyone here is saying, like it's a case by case basis, like First I think, off, uh, start, start with infrequent administration. And if you you notice too much aromatization, maybe go from twice a week to every other day. Yeah. If you're still noticing it, from every other day to every day, and then just find your happy medium. Everyone's going to be different. I think guys are guilty of that for a lot of things, and they think that what yeah. they are doing right now is what everyone should be doing. So yeah. a lot of the times, if you'll listen to certain coaches – they're prescribing a certain thing because it's what they believe in right now or what they're doing right now. Um, mm. And they think sometimes that's the only way. Um, when Tommy, you can speak cause you and I talk every day. Right. I mean, I don't, I have, I don't ever talk in those terms, right? Like you and I, no, we propose no. things and we play with ideas, but I don't yeah. ever, I've never once said to you, you have to do this. No, yeah. no. And um, yeah, it's good to, well, one, I'm not extremely new to this stuff. Yeah. So it's good that you accept my feedback and we can bounce ideas back and forth. Um, if I was newer to things, then I, I would want you to be a bit more. To an extent, and I am with guys that are newer, but I still, right. absolute right. statements are not always. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. And it, it comes back to the whole confirmation bias thing. That's the crux of it a lot of the time. Like people are looking for, um, I suppose, data to justify their viewpoint. And mm -hmm. it's kind of like they'll, 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 decide on something they'll just run with it and they'll just try to pull everything out of the woodworks to prop that up and it's like no you need to just accept the fact that there are like i said no absolutes uh like you guys have both said like you have to kind of as cliche and as bro -y as it sounds find what works for you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah but yeah i do agree with paul there is a big difference in romanization there's a big difference in side effects but it depends on the person how you want to use things mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what feels yeah. best for you. Yeah. All right. What do we got up next, Colin? Brandon has a question for Paul. Do shoulder injuries affect your ability to hit poses properly? If so, how do you work around them or through them? Yeah, really. Like uh, for me, like the front double bicep, especially the rear double bicep, because you got to crank your crank your arms really far back. I can't get my arms back enough, and it makes my arms. I got big arms and my arms look small in the rear double bicep because I can't get my my shoulders or my arms rotated back far enough mm -hmm. to, to really make my arms pop. So yeah, it does affect me. Um, I don't know what to do about it. I have a torn labrum. There's, I mean, other than surgery, and I don't know that <clears throat> the surgery is going to fix mobility. Right. So I'm probably going to make it worse. If, if Brandon's having this himself, um, I just recently started getting scraping done more frequently and I can get my back wider in the, you know, lat spreads and things like that. Um, my training's even gotten better because you have more range of motion out of those scapulas. Um, so that's something if Brandon's having issues like that, unless he's just asking about your situation, but that's something I've been doing that is carried over to my training and my posing. Man, I knew last year I was screwed at uh, finals at that show when they had us hit the rear double bicep three times. I'm like, God damn it, man! <laughs> this is my this is my this is my worst pose, my absolute worst pose. I can't get my shoulders rotated or my arms rotated back enough because of my shoulders. And they had us they moved us around and had me hit that pose three different times. I'm like, well, fuck. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, it was close though. It was close. Enough, yeah, it was uh, close to warrant that being, you know, the tiebreaker, as it were. Not, uh, if any judges are listening to this, no d rear double bicep comparisons at the <laughs> Masters Nationals. <laughs> <laughs> All 
Oh, man. All right, what do we got next here? Uh, Mike Bell's fitness shorts <laughs> has a question <laughs> yeah. for, for Nick. When are you stepping on stage again, Nick? Oh, who, who knows, eh? When I'm big enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just keep going. Um, plan is I'm doing a mini cut at the moment, so I've dropped down to 5,000 calories, a bit of an aggressive deficit to clean up. and That's an aggressive probably, deficit? Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I dropped, I, I, at first week, I, I, this was like, I dropped the insulin a week before I started the deficit, so it wasn't a drop of like much water weight, but I dropped 10 pounds in the first week, mm. going to 5,000 calories. So it's, it seems to be doing the trick. It'll... I'll probably need one or two more adjustments before the mini cuts up, but six weeks mini cutting. Um, uh, it's my 30th birthday when I finish the mini cut. So I'll, yeah, family's coming over to visit me. So I'll do that. And then I'll go into one more push phase, probably, uh, 16 to 20 weeks. And it's depending on how, how my body tolerates it. And then, yeah, basically see where I'm at. Hopefully I hit a tidy 300 pound this time. Cause I, I got up to 282 pound in my last push up. So, um, yeah. Awesome, I've, I've been 300 before and it wasn't pretty <laughs> yeah it, it doesn't feel pretty it wasn't that. i mean it wasn't what we would call that. or it wouldn't yeah. it wasn't <laughs> as what you aussies would call a tidy push-up <laughs> <laughs> it was um, a not so tidy push it was up. a whop that, a whopper push-up <laughs> a push-up <laughs> it's a domino's pizza and ben and yeah. jerry's push-up uh, the, the <laughs> mcdouble's push-up and a lot of a lot of weed <laughs> the um the funny thing about like the off season is i mean i honestly think it's what makes or breaks a bodybuilder i mean most people tap out when it comes to e eating enough food uh when it get when you get to that high level like i mean you guys know what it's like you you enjoy it first but then you hit that body fat set point body weight set point that your body is just not comfortable with mm -hmm. and you're literally sitting there with a meal for 30 45 minutes trying to get it down mm -hmm. and it's it's one of those things like i mean people think it's the uh, I, I mean I, when i say people like the the amateur or competitor they think oh it, it's surely it's going to be the drugs where bodybuilders tap out it's no it's a food like you can train hard you can take yep. drugs it's pretty yeah pretty the drugs simple, are easy but, yeah yeah the but food eating is the, the hardest right, part yeah and not just the training food, the like, training is easy because we all like yeah. to train um yeah but the food, like, yeah, sometimes you'll just sit at that and yeah, stare at yeah. that meal like, man, I got to eat this somehow, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And it's not it's not like the, I guess, calories in general. Like, I mean, I'm sure you'd all agree. We could go to Cheesecake Factory <laughs> every day and clean up yeah. 10,000 calories easily sure. and we'd probably enjoy that and would be, like, unhealthy as fuck in six months. Yeah. But to eat chicken and rice like dry yeah. chicken and rice or beef yeah. and rice is, is on repeat is bloody hard yeah. whether it's like the the act of eating it or the the fact that it just doesn't taste hyper palatable yeah and i always it's like i always yeah. uh save things in my toolbox for when that comes like my food is pretty plain year round but mm -hmm. when i really start to struggle to eat that's when mm -hmm. i'll start to try to make the food actually taste good for once and yeah, you know a lot of times that, and stuff exactly a lot of times that will push you over the hump and um mm. you'll be able to make it until your your next you know cut phase at least you know well, yeah. you can do the dr todd i wish he was on here the uh chicken shake with hawaiian punch oh, oh fuck oh, that, that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. there's a cool <laughs> kind of I the opposite mc i need Sorry. mcdonald's before i drink chicken shakes <laughs> yeah, kind of the opposite the opposite effect, like something I do with my kids, because it shows that mm -hmm. like it's really difficult to over one overeat healthy food, and two, it's it, it's difficult to eat a lot of it. Is like if my kids tell me they're hungry, I ask if they want an apple. If they say no, then they're not hungry. Yeah, they're just <laughs> like, yeah. They clearly want a muffin. Muffin's yeah. not the answer. Do you want chicken? Like everyone here knows how hard it is to overeat on chicken. Like, my my yeah. garbage cans right next to me, and it smells good as hell right now. So <laughs> <laughs> that's how yeah. you know you're getting hungry. <laughs> yeah. Well, what, like, what is it? There's um he he there's two types of hunger: hedonic hum, hunger. I can't remember, can't remember the names of them. You know what I'm talking about, hey? One's like a, a, a pseudo hunger, and it's just boredom. The other one's actual like physiological yeah. hunger. That's and a good like, that's yeah. a good test though. Do, would you eat an apple right now and just be extremely satisfied, yeah. or yeah. a plain chicken breast? Right? Oh yeah, plain chicken. And yeah. When that sounds good, it's like man, you're probably hungry. I know. I don't know if you guys are like this, but I know when prep is getting real when I'm hammering jars of pickles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, 
Pickles, yeah, pickles, or, uh, pickles are a good go-to. Or does anyone here do <laughs> yeah. that? Like, open the peanut butter jar, smell it, close it, and put it. Back? I do that. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah I'm a yeah. smell guy. Yeah, <laughs> I can't. It's a dangerous game to play. It, it's it's like, a dangerous yeah. game. <laughs> yeah, I don't... my my wife is pregnant right now, so <laughs> you know, I'll no. I'll pick up food for her and like oh. I'll sit, sit in the car for a minute, like. Man, this smells good. (laughs) (laughs) I don't do that, but I'll start watching food porn on YouTube. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Tommy, this is your first kid, too, right? Yeah, this is our first kid. Yeah. It's really cool. I feel like it'll give you a different reason to diet and eat those that food too when you have kids. Oh, I agree. Yeah. It shows you like it's really amazing though, the influence it has on them. Yeah, yeah, and she she eats quite well too, so um, it'll be good. You know, kids need to learn nutrition <laughs> from the beginning, and they need to learn it from their parents because they don't buy their groceries. So when they end up fat, it's not their fault. You no, know, it's a parenting issue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm one thing I love doing in prep is oh. uh, making like a, a slushy, but I'll get like EAAs. I'll put a scoop of EAAs in a, a like a bullet blender, and yeah. just a like half a cup of ice cubes and just blend and blitz that. And it literally turns into like a, yeah, like a slushy or a smoothie sort mm-hmm. of thing. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you can just drink that. It's real nice. Yeah. I had a bowl of ice water. During the- <laughs> I, I chew ice cubes during prep, like towards the very end. Um, it could be like an anxiety thing too. Um, but yeah, like six weeks out, I normally start chewing ice cubes. Like I'll go to a gas station and, mm-hmm. you know, just buy a cup of ice <laughs> <laughs> what, what what are your things you guys eat at the end of prep to keep keep the hunger? Oh, oh man, nicotine. I'll let someone else go first. Nicotine. <laughs> yeah. I use like spinach. Like if you get a bag of spinach, you just eat the whole thing. Or use a baby spoon. I don't know if anyone does that. Like I still have the leftover spoons from when my kids were literally little. Oh, you use smaller Ever. spoons or, or <laughs> chop. I do. Yeah. Try to eat, try to eat rice spoon. with chopsticks. It takes forever. Yeah. I yeah. do. I do use smaller utensils as I start dieting, and I use so bigger ones in the off season. <laughs> yep. Um, so I do use smaller spoons. Um, man, I don't really do too many like uh, little craving things. You know, like, like I know guys do like pickles and like they do these zero calorie like diet drinks and stuff like that. I try to cut a lot of that stuff out as I get closer to the show. Um, and well, I know it's me. zero calorie, but <laughs> yeah, a lot of people do the I'm opposite. doubling down. Yeah, I think exactly. some people some people hold a little bit of water when they get carried away with the artificial sweeteners. Yeah. And I know it's not like a I don't want to sound bro sciencey, but most people are gonna be fine with it. But there are some individuals that seem to have a bit of an adverse response. And yeah. I mean if the different like the difference between like holding a few pounds of fluid and not is just cutting out diet soda for the last few weeks of prep, like just let man up and do it. That's like. that's how I look at it because let's say I don't I don't know that it's the difference between first and second place, but let's say you got second place and you're like, man, maybe I should have cut back on some of those diet drinks and hot sauce. And obviously, yeah. I'm not saying that's a thing, but it would probably cross your mind. Like, yeah, maybe I should have been on you know a bit more disciplined and not had that shit, and maybe it would have made a difference. If not, whatever. But. Yeah. Um, that's how my mind works. Like, what if, right? Yeah, I feel like yeah, anyone who's competed and, thinks that when they're on stage, right? Like, you get on stage, yeah, you have all this flood of regret come back, right? About yeah, all the yeah. things you like slacked on. You're like, man, I just did one more set of abs. Why didn't I not work my calves? <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. You no, know, yeah. it's like the dumb stuff. You're like that. You're like, I shouldn't have had a diet soda yesterday. Right. Yeah. Right. Yep. I yeah. was going through a case of Coke, Costco case of Coke Zeros every week. No shit. <laughs> oh yeah I, I i smash them like crazy but i think the main thing honestly is just find your your threshold and like don't don't have it very oh, i think i found it there is, <laughs> there is, yeah. but the thing is I, a lot of people don't realize there is some sodium in diet soda like true and i think if you're dramatically fluctuating in your like soda intake it could potentially just make your look a little bit inconsistent day to day if you're not there's a lot of caffeine too when they really start adding up you know yeah yeah, i will say this there is Mm -hmm. there is an upper limit of coke zero before your butthole explodes (laughs) 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 that's what bodybuilding's about is finding that ceiling and staying just below it right yeah i i like like the uh like stuff that that i would think is absolutely disgusting in the off season starts taking 
tasting good. Oh, like when yeah. you when you're dumping the G Hughes sauces on stuff. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know you're or in like, a bad uh, spot. That's sweet. That's sweet chili. Sugar, that's sweet sugar free chili, Jello. Man. Yeah, peanut butter on beef. I've done that before. <laughs> just yeah. like just weird shit. So one one thing I like to do is um, this isn't really a diet hack. I guess it's not like a calorie free thing. But um, one thing I do love to make toward the end of prep is it's like casein protein in fat free Greek yogurt. Kind of like that's what I do. Put yeah. some frozen berries in there. Yep. Uh, another thing is rice cakes with uh, PB fit and like some sugar free Jello. Like yep. the smuck is like sugar free Jello. And do you reconstitute the just... PB fit? Huh? Are you yeah. adding water to the PB fit and making it? Yeah, yeah. turn it into like the peanut butter and put it on the rice cakes. Yeah, and then a bit of like Jello and and yeah, that that goes down the treat. Like I mean, have that and the rice cakes are typically brown rice, so they got a little bit of fiber to them, so they're a little bit more uh, satiating. And yeah, having that as a like a, a dessert pre bed, like the casein uh, in the yogurt and in the casein protein. Yeah, a nice slow kind of. And yeah, then digestion. especially if you get fat, you know, mix a little peanut butter in there and keep it in the freezer like peanut, an hour and a half before you eat it. It's peanut like butter, ice cream. or crush up dark chocolate. It's another yep. little trick. Or yeah, so many things to do. You could even get the PB fit if you want just some extra protein, and you don't mind it's coming from a plant source and turn it into like a like a, a drizzle, like a syrup, mm. or whatever. Like just mix it with some water, but a little bit more than you would to turn it into like a a, a peanut butter. And then you can just kind of drizzle it over the top of the Greek yogurt. And yeah, that's nice too. Yeah, there's a lot of things you can do to, but you've just got to be careful. I think in prep, you don't want to get carried away with making it taste too good. Otherwise, no you don't shit. Want to put that's what down. I was thinking too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I say, I always say to my prep clients, like, you want your food to be a seven out of 10. If it's a sure. 10 out of 10, you're not going to want to leave it alone. Well, <laughs> if it's, it's like, a one out of 10, you're not going to want to touch women. it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. yeah right. <laughs> Well, it's like we just Sweet talked fun. about. I mean, when you're hungry enough, that food's probably going to taste good regardless, you know? Exactly. Uh, you know, depending on where you are in the prep and everything like that. But yeah, I don't I don't go really out of my way to make my prep food taste good. I don't. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. everybody knows me. I'm the bland eater. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> I, 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 my food looks awful. All right, folks, we need to wrap this up. I got things to do, food to eat, speaking of food. And, yeah, uh, yeah. I appreciate you having to... me on. Yeah, Tommy. Yeah, it was good good having you on, man. Yeah, thank you, guys. All right, bros, thank you for watching. We appreciate each and every one of you. We'll be back next week. Keep an eye out for it.